both near and far. We do this by protecting and administering permanent funds through thoughtful grant making to improve the quality of life in the community we serve. Simply put, donors who give through a community foundation build sustainable, permanent funds called endowments through contributions big and small to support organizations they care about most, forever. Through the generosity of our many donors and the responsible, informed investment of permanent funds, we will increase our grant-making ability for the benefit of our community for generations to come. All we need is you. What causes are you passionate about? What organization matters most to you? We can help you ensure your charitable interests are supported forever. Donors can give to an existing endowment or establish their own. Some choose to give now, while others make their gift later through their will or estate plan. To learn what your options are, talk to your community foundation. We're here to help you reach your philanthropic goals. If you love our community, let's leave our little corner of the world a bit better than we found it. Not just today, but for future generations too. The Washington County Community Foundation has been making our home a terrific place to live, work, and play since 1993 through the generosity of donors just like you. Why? Well, just like you, we also really love our community. Welcome everyone to tonight's broadcast of West Washington basketball here on the Ron Smith Court in T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium. We've got sectional 61 action. Heated first game, Lanesville able to pull that one out over Rock Creek, so they are in the championship game. This game, the winner of this, will face the number one team in the state, the Lanesville Eagles. West Washington hoping to play spoils on their home court where they do face the Borden Braves. Borden was able to knock off West Washington just a couple of weeks ago there at Borden, but this is a whole different ball game. This is at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium with West Washington at home. Um, just a different, different feeling tonight than what we had there at Borden. I'm joined by my broadcast partner tonight, Mr. Ryan Bat. Ryan, thoughts on tonight? Hey, hey, Craig, I tell you what, it's sectional time, and I tell you the atmosphere here is outstanding. And then look at the cheer block across the way, uh, you know, off to the left of the camera. And, you know, we're a wide out tonight, and uh, a lot of fans over there. They had a pet session today at school. The girls are pumped up. I talked to them all going by the locker room. Uh, they're pretty excited. And, you know, I tell you what, uh, these girls are coming out here with the thought that they're going to win tonight. And, you know, and, and any time you come out here with that attitude, you know, things are positive. And, and you know, like I say, I, I, like you said, if, you know, we went down there and got, got kind of beat the other night, you know, a couple weeks ago. Guess what? They're in our court tonight. They're in our gymnasium. It's a little different atmosphere than theirs. I, th I think it's going to be a heck of a game. Those of you watching at home want to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors that um, sponsored sectional games. That camera that you see roaming around with the crowd and the uh, free throw lane and, and everything that you see at this moment, that was made possible by those sponsors. So big thanks to all of them that were able to uh, join in. Um, you know, Rick Roberts, um, Hearst Auction Service, which is sponsoring this game here uh, right now, Jacoby Sales. Um, I'm leaving somebody out. Richardson Heating Richardson and Air, which was our first game. Yep. Um, John Jones. And then John Jones, our ga our championship game for tomorrow. So um, big thanks to all of those uh, sponsors. Tonight's game could go could go either way. It's it's uh, going to be an interesting night. This, this Borden team could possibly be overlooking the West Washington Senators. You know, West Washington comes in with their record. Um, 
you know, of 13 and 9. Going down to Borden just a few weeks ago and were unable to get the win there. But then, you know, we're going to come back home. Borden, a team that only has four losses on the year. Those four are to this Lanesville team that they lost by two at home, which I went and watched that game. It was a heck of a game. Um, they lost to Franklin Central, a 4A school. They lost to Orleans by four. And then they lost to BNL just this past weekend, um, you know, in the, in the who's who of Southern Indiana Basketball Classic that they uh, put on there. So, you know, it, Borden hasn't played a game since they played that Bedford game where they did end up getting beat by 16. So Borden's hungry for a, for a win, but I'm not sure they're as hungry as West Washington. Yeah, I, I agree, Craig. And I, I tell you what, this the Borden team looks just a little bit, uh, you know, kind of just a little bit off on their warm-ups, I think, compared to what they look like whenever we watched them in, at Borden. Uh, you know, coming in here tonight, you know, your second game, you know, the, the hype of the first game, uh, Borden sat out here and watched the end of that last game and kind of was cheering and, and rooting, obviously, for the for uh, Rock Creek to win that one. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I think they kind of kind of got a little bit of hype and they're coming back off their win there a little bit and where the Senators was in the locker room there and kind of coach kept them kind of contained a little bit. You know, the crowd was pretty wild there at the end of that last game. But, you know, I, I tell you, the Senators just out here – they're out here, they, they look the part. There's certain times I always tell them, I was like, I tried to tell Jayla there night, I said, you know, whenever I can tell whenever you guys are going to come in and play good because just by the way you guys warm up, the way you come onto the court, you know, out here high fiving and, and going on the game, I, it just it, it comes off pretty good. Uh, you know, I, I think there's a good vibe here tonight. We got a lot of people, a lot of people online uh, watching the game, and, and uh, as so, I know. Uh, Last uh, Tuesday, this past Tuesday night, uh, first game sectional, uh, we even had a guy from Hawaii watching us out here. Oh, so, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, so we had I, I got a phone call from that. But uh, uh, If pretty, you don't know, Ryan has connections everywhere. He knows <laughs> yeah. everybody yeah. Knows it, it, everywhere. If, if you go anywhere with Ryan Bat, somebody <laughs> knows him when you walk in the door. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool, though, because he's – He's texting me, I guess, during the game, and I didn't really, I didn't get my phone there uh, till after the game, and it was pretty cool that we, you know, we had somebody watching from all the way over there through a family member. But uh, uh, you know, it just, just a lot of things happen. You know, like uh, I think uh, last game Meredith maybe, maybe ties a record here to school, uh, yeah. or, or passes the record. I think, I think Jayla had the, Jayla tied the record back whenever she played uh, uh, what was White, that? River, White Valley. River Valley. Yeah. Meredith surpassed the record there, their last. You know, I mean. You know, there's two records that Meredith broke this year, and, and that's pretty cool, you know, coming into it. I think the key to the game tonight is, is honestly in Meredith and Jayla. I think they have to come in here and be ready, pumped up. They're the, leading, they're the leading drivers for the team as far as driving that ball to the court, doing some of those things, getting the ball to the basket. And then our big, Ava Woods. Ava's got to come in here, and she's got to be strong. We talked about her building the wall the other night and, and how, how strong she was when she got her hands up and she didn't drop those hands down. And, you know, she takes up a lot of room underneath that goal whenever her hands are up and ready to go. So, you know, like I say, then we come off our guards, and, you know, Shelby's coming in here. Uh, Shelby's going to get a start there, uh, a senior there that, that that does a lot of positive things. And, and then uh, Lily coming off the bench. Lily comes in, uh, going to be probably the, our other starter, I'm guessing, right, Craig? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Lily's coming in and, and just a ball of fire when she wants to be. I know Lily's been kind of sick here this week uh, coming into this game, but, you know, Lily, Lily causes a lot of havoc underneath. And that's what you got to have. Emma Schmidt comes out there, and I tell you, Emma, Emma's one of those players that you just never know where she's going to show yeah. up, and she just shows up in all the right places sometimes. And you know, like I say, if all these here things click, if we can get them off the bench, coming in to substitute, get the girls on the court, not to get in foul trouble, I'm telling you what now, I, I'm looking to be sitting right back here again tomorrow night. You know, Borden comes in with their 19 and four record. They are led by Riley Rarick, um, the 5'11 sophomore. I mean, what more can you say about her? She's she's kind of their their do it all guard. Does you know the the majority of their rebounding down low, the majority of their scoring, just kind of a, a do it all player. A lot like the Hadley Crozier that we just saw in that first game. Um, then they go to AJ Mallard, the the 5'5 sharp shooting um, guard that just really kind of lit the Senators up there at Borden. Um, I believe she had five three-pointers in that game. It just, you know, she just, she. it seemed like she couldn't miss. Yeah. Um, and then Ava Wheeler, number three, underneath. Um, didn't really have a great game against the Senators that first time, but she's one who, you know, does a lot of things that don't show up in the uh, in the scorer's book. You know, getting the, the rebounds, the deflections, just altering shots um, that, that she does. So it's a, it's a really interesting matchup here for the Senators. Both of these teams, both Borden and West Washington, 
are a young team. I mean, the Senators have two seniors on their team that they, um, you know, play. Borden really doesn't have a senior that they, they go to, that they play a lot. They don't even have one listed on their whole roster. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's one of those. Both of these teams are looking, you know, towards the future. What can they do, you know, going forward? Neither one of them want to end their season right now. Neither one of them yeah. want this to be their last game. That's, that's for sure. I mean, you're playing for all the marbles tonight, and you know we got we got lucky and got to play senior night here with uh, the girls the other night. And you know, we, we, you know, they they're fighting as hard as they can. You know, you got Evo O'Toole out there, number two, facing the her back's facing the camera right now, and Shelby out there warming up on the side, uh, number twelve. But you know, those girls don't want to leave tonight. But you know, Senators are a young team, and they, and you know, like I say, there's. Uh, uh, lots of freshmen, lots of sophomores, and then and then looking even into next year. Yeah. You know, you, you're going to lose, you're going to lose two, but gain six. Right. You know, and and that's that's pretty cool that that you know that's going to happen. So you know, the Senator girls basketball team is going to really, really, really uh, uh, be on fire for the next few years. And and that's exactly it. You know, just like we said, the Senators don't want to end their season. Borden doesn't want to end their season. Everybody right. wants to play at least one more game. Right. Hopefully, right. two or three more games. Um, you know, and this is one of those sectionals that is the predominant 1A sectional in the state, having, you know, Borden, who's ranked, I believe, the last ranking that came out, they were number three. three yes. um, Lanesville, number one. So it's, a, it's the predominant sectional in the southern part of the state. West Washington is the lone team right now that has the chance to play the spoil yep. and send that number three team home if they're able to get a win tonight. Yeah, I, I tell you what, it's it, – you know, and everybody comes to me, you know, like, and we, we talk about this here team a lot, and, you know, it's kind of one of those things I'm either talking livestock or I'm talking basketball. And, you know, like, sometimes <laughs> do you, do we – Do you ever talk both at the yeah, same time? We Actually, we do. That's what I was getting ready to get into. Like, we got – I actually got some friends off to my left here that uh, auctioneer my cattle sales, and they come down and and, uh, and watch. They're from Bloomington, and, and you know, they're like, and you talk about your girls playing all the time. And I'm like, man, I just can't get enough of it, man. It's just, it's just crazy. But, but you know, like, it's like I told Jayla, I said, you, whether or not you win or not win or lose tonight, you'll be in this gym tomorrow because that's just what you guys do. Your yeah. whole team will be here watching to see who wins because guess what? You're scouting for next year at this point. If you if you lose the game tonight, you're scouting for next year. Same way with Borden. If Borden loses tonight, they're coming tomorrow night and they're going to scout for next year. And, that, and that's how competitive this sectional is. I, I, some people call it the most competitive sectional that there is in the state of Indiana. And I'll tell you what, between this sectional and there, there's a couple more, you know, to the east of us and stuff like that, I mean, uh, boy, oh, boy, we got some great athletic girls down here in southern Indiana. And, and I'll tell you what, the Senators, I've been proud of them from day one. And, you know, those girls, have, we, we have got talent all throughout the bench. Uh, substituting in. We got size. We got power. You know, th those girls are ready to go. You know, I talked to Nick Ingram, who called our first game, and he said that, you know, he's he's from Salem, you know, and, and does a lot of Salem games. And he said, this gym is packed. We, we haven't yeah. seen a gym packed like this you right. know, this year. And, and that's what you get here at West Washington. Um, you know, Lanesville sticking around to watch this game. Borden has brought all of Borden. All of Camelsburg yeah. is, is across the way. We've right. got Senator Nation all whited out. There's a big number 12 over there yeah. standing front row. Um, Not sure whose kid that is. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> he's got a, a nice haircut going on too. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, but and, and even Rock Creek, they're sticking around, you know, watching watching the game from their section too. So, you know, there's a ton of people here that are interested in what the Lady Senators and the Lady Braves are doing. Yeah, and, and you know, it's it, it, it's a, it's a good game. I, you know, I've talked to people that says, hey, you know, who it doesn't matter who wins uh, your games, but we will be there on Saturday night. Yeah, and you know, and that's that's kind of cool, you know, to hear from just people around that that you don't really talk basketball to, you know, a whole lot, or maybe is not a fan of West Washington or a fan of Borden, but just in general, like, yeah, hey, just we're, we're, see basketball. we're coming to your school because <laughs> we want to see that game. And, well, and, and, and West Washington is known to do it right. I mean, yeah. Darren Russell does a great job yes, putting sir. on a, a great sectional here, um, you know, and and the school is set up you know with the sunken gym you can get a lot of people in here it, it's just a great atmosphere to see a game um you know and even those of you at home who aren't here we're going to make it feel like you're here with our yeah. roaming crowd cam you know that's on the screen right now you're you're looking at the Borden section from the floor here at ron smith court um you know so it's it's just a great atmosphere to have basketball yeah yeah i, I tell you it's it's uh, like you said the, the first broadcast there Tuesday night. We're the only court of the t of the sectional teams that is a sunken gym, 
So, you know, do you say we have home court advantage? Yes, sir, we do. Yeah. And, and you know, like we need to play like we have it tonight. Well, we're getting ready for our starting lineups here. We're about seven seconds away from uh, Claude Combs, the, the longtime public address announcer here, um, announcing the players. West Washington is going to be the home team here tonight. They are on the bottom of the bracket. Borden is going to be the visiting team. I'm double checking my numbers. I'm not sure I got everybody that I need. Yeah, we got number one, 11, two, three, and 22. Gotcha. That's what I had, but I wanted to double check. I didn't want to miss it on this one. <clears throat> so, Lady Braves are going to get their uh, non starters announced because they haven't played a game here yet where the Senators have. So, Lady Braves is going to go through their complete lineup. Um, before we get their starters to come out. They are coached by Coach Vic, who has been there. Um, I believe this is his eighth season at Borden. Yep, nope, seventh season at Borden. He's 82 and 78, um, which over the past couple of years, they've really had a quite a winning season, quite a few winning seasons for them. So the Lady Braves are going to start number one, Reagan Loy, the 5'3 junior. Also in the backcourt, they're going to start A.J. Mallard, the 5'5 sophomore. In the front court, they're going to go with number two, Riley Rarick, the 5'11 sophomore. Also in the front court is number three, Ava Wheeler, the 5'10 sophomore. And rounding out the starting lineup at forward is, the, is number 22, the 5'10 sophomore, Emma Hart. So they go with four sophomores and one junior in their starting lineup. The West Washington Senators are going to go back to their regular starting lineup. We hear Senator Nation along the way over there giving a, uh, a, rousing, a rousing ovation to the starters for the Senators. Sorry, they forgot Ava Wheeler yeah. on the starting lineup. Yeah. So Borden, Borden lets them know that, hey, you forgot Ava Wheeler. We're not going to forget her on the defensive side tonight, I'm sure. No, she's so the starting defender. lineups for the Lady Senators, they're going to go with number 12, the 5'4 senior, Shelby Griffiths, averaging four points, two rebounds. Off, along with her in the backcourt is number three, Emma Schmidt, the 5'4 junior, averaging five points, three rebounds. And the third guard in that three-guard set is number 10, Meredith Deaton, a 5'5 sophomore, averaging 15 points, six rebounds. The two in the front court are number five, Jayla Batt, the 5'7 sophomore, averaging 12 points, eight rebounds. And her front court mate, number 32, Ava Woods, the 5'11 junior, averaging six points, four rebounds. They're coached by Coach Kristen Messamore who is the only person in the building, I believe, who is in two Hall of Fames, the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame and the Bedford North Lawrence Hall of Fame. She was just inducted this past weekend. So two Hall of Fames for her. We're ready to jump here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium on the Ron Smith Court. <clears throat> We're going to see Jayla Bat and Riley Rarick jump it up in the center. I'll tell you what, Craig, it's all getting ready to go down here in Senator <laughs> basketball. One of the two great teams getting ready to Clyde. If you're watching at home, don't go nowhere. Borden controls the ball. They go in the front to Ava Wheeler. Quickly get that offense set up. They bring it back out to Riley Rarick. Rarick drives down the lane, leaves it off to Wheeler. Wheeler down the lane, kicks out to Reagan Loy. Over to Emma Hart, back in the corner to Wheeler. Senator's doing a great job switching and getting getting up next to the players here on the defensive end. Yeah, Jayla Bat picks up Riley Rarick. She's got to stay on the court and stay out of foul trouble. Yeah, turnover That's right there. First turnover for Borden Braves. Meredith Deaton gonna do the ball handling, bring it up, give it off to Emma Schmidt. We got to talk about the Senators making those good firm passes. You know, Borden is one of those teams that's got some long arms. They'll get right in that passing lane. Going to give a big shout-out to our two um, additional people. We've got Jackson Wiseman on the crowd cam 
and Jessica Akers running the camera up here. That one taken away from Ava Woods as she goes down the lane. Quickly up the court was Mallard off to Ava Wheeler. Leaves that one short. Meredith Deaton tries to get out of there with it. Unable to do so. That's turnover number two for the Senators. And a layup, I believe that was Mallard. Yeah, just some slot ball there that kind of got out of control. We got it. Be strong with that ball and get, get the players across the court. Ball uh, goes in the middle of the court, and then they set it, their offense back up with Emma Schmidt. Shelby Griffiths doesn't like what she sees, so she says let's run it again. Set it up, reverse the ball around. 6.15 to go here. Borden leads two to nothing. Senator's doing a great job moving that ball. Like to see Emma get there a little faster. Yep, going to pick up a foul. I believe Wheeler's going to get that one. If Emma gets in that drive a little bit faster and then stops and pops that shot, I, I really think that's her shot. Yep, they did get Wheeler. That's her first, team's first. That's a long pass that Jayla cannot throw. Almost a turnover. Meredith was able to save that one. They get back in there, 55 offense that they're going to run here. Leave it off to Schmidt. Schmidt looks to drive, feeds it down low to Deaton. Deaton with a power dribble. Can't get anywhere. Leaves it off to, Sh leaves yeah. it off to Shelby, but going to be called for the travel. So that's a turnover on the Senators. I think Meredith just needs to slow down a little bit when she gets under there. I, Kind of like whenever Emma or Shelby goes under, we can't go under and then decide we ain't going to shoot the ball. We have to come in with a plan. Ball comes out to Emma Hart down into Wheeler. Wheeler with the spin move up and good. And one opportunity for Ava Wheeler. Not sure about that call, Craig. I mean, I know she was moving her feet, but boy, she was as straight as an arrow. Meredith Deaton picks that one up. That's not what the Senators want. They got to keep Deaton on the floor. Wheeler to the line. Couple of dribbles. That one touches every part of the rim before it falls through. Borden going to be in a 2 2 1 here. We'll get that ball across the timeline. Last time we played Borden, we only saw them sub one person, so they yeah. only go about six deep. Yeah, Borden's not very deep at all. That's why I think the key is we have to drive to the basket. Deaton for three. Boom, knocks that one in. Cuts the lead to two, five to three. Senators trail here. Rare quickly up the court, leaves it off to Wheeler. Wheeler hounded by Deaton. Down the lane goes Mallard. Mallard misses that one. Gets her own rebound, goes up again and misses that one. That's a good rebound by Shelby. Senators come back the other way, set up their offense. There's a turnover for the center. Oh, that's a carry. Oh, Meredith's going to pick up another. That's going to be her second. Senator's going to have to find some offense from somebody else because Deaton's going to have to come out of the game here. Senator Nation not very happy with that one. Yeah, I didn't really see that foul according to some of the stuff we've seen earlier. Wheeler to the line looking for her fourth point. That one hits the front of the rim and trickles through. In comes Lily Thompson. Lily had started the last couple of games of the season. Uh, you know, and, and I think, Craig, I think Lily can guard her. Uh, you know, Lily, Lily's pretty stout and strong. You know, there's a foot difference in height, but I still think Lily can guard her down low. That one no good, but Borden with the rebound. Senators got to get that box out. They leave it off to Loy over wide. That doesn't go down, go anywhere. She gets it to Rarick. Rarick with the spin move against Jayla Bat. That one up and good for her. Riley Rarick's first two points of the night makes it eight to three. Senators get the ball across half court. Quickly in the corner to Ava Woods. She knocks it down. Put the lead back to three. Eight to five, four minutes to go here in the first. Defense, 
you know, I'd like to, I'd like to see him get uh, that moving screen there on, on Hart. That was Loy for three. Her first bucket of the night. Moves that lead back out to four. There's a, I think they're going to get Ava Wheeler for that one. Yeah. Reaching in. That's, that's a pass that the Senators can't make. That's her second. That's good, Craig. We're even for even right there. So Wheeler with two. She's going to come out. They're going to bring in Fisk, the 5'7 freshman. Senators look a little bit lost here. Yeah. Now they get moving in their offense. Ava Woods comes flashing across. That ball got tipped out. We're going to need Emma to get back. Shelby controls it and then loses it. They hand it off to Rarick. It goes underneath to Hart. Hart going to get bodied up by Woods. Going to be her first foul of the night. I'd like to see Ava got there just a little bit sooner. I know she was straight up and down, but she got her with the body. Borden out to 11 to 5 lead here. Hart going to go to the line. That one no good. Emma Hart goes back to the line for her second attempt. That one up and good. Senators get it across half court. Then quickly in the corner to Abel Woods, she swings it back to Griffiths. Griffiths sets up the offense. We're going to get a foul there on Reagan Loy. Going to be her first personal reaching in on, I believe that was Schmidt that she reached in on. Senator's going to take the ball out underneath their own bucket. Jayla Bat to inbound it. We got a lot of people not moving. There yeah. we go. It gets in to Thompson. Thompson tries to reverse pivot. Nothing going. Back to Griffiths. Griffiths off to Schmidt. Schmidt down the lane before she loses that one. Senator's still not able to get any offense going as of yet. Got to get something working. That one blocked. Yeah. Lily Thompson unable to get that one up not on a, the board. Not a good shot at all. Emma Hart goes down. Oh, and a cheap foul. Going to pick up one on Jayla Bat as she reaches for that one as Hart goes to the line. It is definitely heated up in here. Yeah, for sure. I am hot. <laughs> I like to see Coach Messmore over there just chewing that referee a little bit on that call. And, Emma you know, Hart we, we able to knock. Three or four fouls here in the first half. That's a little bit touchy. Hart's second one up and no good. Senator's able to rebound it and come away the other way. Yeah. Jayla Bat into a crowd, up and good for two. Her first two-point bucket of the night. That cuts the lead to three. Rarick. Goes down the lane. That one no good. Bat with the rebound. Leaves it off to Thompson. Thompson across half court. Gives it to Shelby Griffiths, who sets up the offense. Jayla thinks about a three. Lets that one fly. It's no good. Hart with the rebound. Quickly ahead. Leaves it off to Loy. Loy misses that one. Yeah, no box out by the Senators. Over to Riley Rarick on the far side in front of Senator Nation. She steps into a three, lets that one fly. It's no good. Shelby Griffiths with the rebound. She goes all the way against Rarick. Rarick gets a hand up, alters that shot. Jayla Bat gets her shot blocked. Then a deep three from... Ava Woods knocks that three-point bucket in. I had my head down and didn't see yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good one. It was a high arcing all the way through the rafters and back down. Senators – oh, I'm off. Senators trail by three. <laughs> Rarick down the lane misses that one.
You know, I like to see center just work that ball, kind of give the girls a little bit of a break right here. You know, stand out there and run a little bit of offense. Look for that easy shot. Yeah, 30 seconds to go here. That's going to be a turnover for the Senators. It's going to be a jump ball. Lily Thompson goes to the floor. Going to stay with the Senators. Ball comes inbound all the way out to Lily Thompson at the top. Going to be a reach in go. on Mallard. Going to be her first personal. Mallard is a very up close defender. She likes to play right up on you. Like Lily could use that to her advantage if she just sees that she's that close every time. Yeah, Senator's going to inbound the ball again. You know, we called Borden's bench not very deep. We'd like to get some foul trouble happening. Comes into. The Senators, they're unable to knock down that two-point bucket. But then Borden turns it back over. Jayla Back goes up and knocks that one in. Makes it 13-12. Three seconds to go. Rarick with the three. That one Ooh. no good. He was on target. So that's going to end the first quarter. The Senators do trail 13-12. to We're going to step aside, have a commercial break from our game sponsor, which is Hearst Auction Service. We'll be back in just a moment. Hearst Auction LLC believes that the auction method is the best way to sell real estate or personal property in settling estates, divorces, bankruptcies, partnerships, and relocations. By bringing together a large number of interested buyers at one time, this in turn creates competitive bidding, which will get the highest dollar for your real estate or personal property. Hearst Auction Service LLC believes that a successful auction doesn't just happen by accident. It depends on proven experience, dedication, reputation, and successful marketing. It's a coordinated event in which every aspect of auction must be carefully planned and executed. From the initial inspection of the property by the auctioneer himself, determining what our customers' goals are, the advertising plan, pre-auction preparation, auction day, End of auction. You can trust Hearst Auction Service LLC. Back to live action here where the Senators do trail by one. Unless you're looking at my stat sheet, we're tied because I'm yeah, missing a yeah. point. <laughs> She's not seeing me. She's checking who's in the game right well, now. Well, there we go. We'll get it. Yeah, Senators inbound the ball. They're going to give Jayla a break, get Macy Lowry in the game here. And that, that should be a five-second call. Meredith's back in the game. It's going to be a turnover for Borden. Oh, good drive by Macy. Lowry That's goes a good up, drive. going to get fouled. We're going to get Rarick on that one. Yep, Rarick's going to pick up her first. And, you know, that, that's the key. to We have to get them in. The Borden bench isn't that deep. Macy Lowry going to go to the line where she is a 50% free throw shooter. They gave it to 10. 10 not even on the floor. I think they changed yeah. it, didn't they? There we go. Now it goes to Riley. Rivera. Yeah, yeah. They had it up on the board as 10, which they don't have a 10. So Lowry misses that first free throw. Borden letting Macy know that she's wide open. Yeah. That second one, bit hard. also no good. Borden with the ball across half court. Mallet off to Wheeler, who's back in the game. So both of the players with two fouls back in the game. Riley Rarick finally breaks loose of Macy Lowry. Yeah, and I like, I like the, I like the, the uh, Macy Lowry tracking Rarick. Rarick <laughs> gets free there and gets her fourth point of the night. Thompson looks to drive baseline, nothing going there. Back to Griffiths. Deep for three. With a deep three. <laughs> Difference in the game so far. Turnover. Senators with six. Borden with three. Rare yep. down the lane. Macy can't overplay that. You know, I want her to be up close and personal with that girl, but she cannot overplay that. We can't have the ball driving to Meredith. 
Senators get it back over half court and then turn it over. And don't foul Meredith. Ooh. That's Mallard. I believe she traveled. She gets a two-point bucket. She's got four. Borden out 19 to 12. Borden kicks ahead to Mallet again. She misses that one. Thompson down the lane, going to bounce that one off of Emma Hart's face. Then it goes up to Wheeler. Wheeler gets that one up on the board, and it's good. Good bucket for Wheeler. Yeah, we lost a little bit of control. We're going to get Jayla back in the game. Yeah, I think you have to get Jayla yeah. back in the game here. You know, the Borden's on a little bit of a run here. They uh, have, have just kind of taken control of the game and the Senators have to slow this one down and get back in control. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get down here and watch the girls. You know, we, we're, we're not getting back fast enough and we're kind of throwing those those passes, the dangerous passes. We talked about hands in the lane. Yeah. Uh, you know, those passes aren't gonna work. Like we said, Senators do trail 21 to 12, 5.52 to left, left here in the first yeah. half. Uh, packed house here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium. Um, yeah, and how about our sponsor, Sam Hurst Auctioneer Service, coming yeah. in here for this game here. Sam and his family, they do a great auctioneer and service, uh, household, personal, property, uh, just some really good people from the board and location. Yeah. I was looking at their website. They kind of auction just a little bit of everything. Yeah, they even have, like, online auctions too. So big thanks to them for sponsoring this game. Jayla Bat swings it all the way over to Deaton. Deaton looks at a three. Pump fakes get Wheeler in oh, that's, the air. That's got to be a foul. Gets it blocked from behind. They kick it back to Rarick. Rarick down the lane. Sets up. Uh, Deaton sets up and then doesn't get the yeah. charge called. He's out of bounds. Yep, Lowry going to. As she catches it, her foot's on the line, so going to be out of bounds. Senators trail by 11. Mallet doing the ball handling. Shelby Griffiths hand guarding her. Wheeler picked up by Jayla Bat. Rarick down the lane. Lowry gets her. Mallet for three. That one off just a touch. Going to be Senator Ball. Senator Nation letting them know that she didn't uh, get anything. Anywhere, anywhere near the rim, <laughs> yeah. Shelby Griffiths brings it across half court. Yeah, and that pass, as we talked earlier, those are not going to work. We can't have Meredith foul. Hart goes up, misses that one. Senator's lucky to get away without a foul um, on that one. Goes across the top over to Deaton. Deaton in the middle to Woods. Woods off to bat in the corner. She doesn't pull the trigger. That one's going to be a jump ball. We'll stay with the Senators. As soon as Meredith goes to her hip, they reach right in and grab that. That's They've scouted yeah, that. Yep. They know it's coming. Yep. Ball comes into the backcourt to Shelby Griffiths. Goes down low to Bat. Bat leaves it off to Lowry. Lowry goes up. She's yeah. going to get fouled. I thought she got it. I, I know she got a good block on that yeah, shot, she got, but she did get hit on the shot. Yep, she got the ball, but she also got her with, her, with the body. Right. So It's going to be the first on Emma Hart. We're going to have to put Macy in the free throw barn. <laughs> <laughs> Macy misses that first one. Second one, also no good. Jayla Bat gets a hand on it, but unable to control it. Ava Wheeler gets it and is out the other way. That's another three-point miss. There we go. We need Meredith to drive the whole way here. That's got to be a foul. No wow. foul coming on that one. Borden mm. rebounds it and heads back. Rarick down the lane. Nobody picks up ball. And Going to go oh. to Borden. There's 
Emma Schmidt comes in for Macy Lowry. You know, I always find it funny that the defensive player is facing the other way and the ball goes out of bounds behind them, and it's always the other team's <laughs> ball. <laughs> I've never figured that one out. That one comes into Wheeler. Ooh. Jayla going to pick up that one. Yeah. That's her second. Free throw for Ava Wheeler. Wheeler with six already. That one no good. Yeah, and I'd like to see Coach Messmore drop into a 2-3 right here on his own. I know she won't, but, you know, it, it would help out a little bit to get back and get set up. Well, you know, they're getting beat on that top screen, and then it leaves your bottom help side, only person there, and we've got two fouls on two of our bigs. Wheeler able to knock that one in. Three forty to go here in the first half. Looks like Borden in kind of a one-three-one here. That's the dangerous yeah, pass. That, Shelby's never going to throw that pass over Wheeler. Wheeler kicks off to Mallard. Mallard for three. That's a miss. Hart with the rebound. Kick it out to Rarick for three. Bang! She knocks that one in. Gives her eleven. Twenty-seven to twelve. Borden out. Coach Messamore going to take a timeout here. She doesn't like what she sees. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. We're going to stick with you. I think the Senators have got to get back on defense, and we've got to stay down low. And, you know, I, let them shoot the three-pointers. I, You know, I, I know they're a good three-point shooting team, but, you know, it really hurts worse whenever you get beat inside. Yeah, if, Borden, if Borden's going to beat you, they're going to have, I would say, let them try to beat you by threes. Yep. You know, we got it within, what, two or three points there earlier in, in the start of the second quarter, and we've just kind of let off the gas a little bit. And, you know, we can't let Borden get ahead of us. Yeah, when they when they play from ahead, they're hard to uh, right. hard to beat. So, And they're playing from ahead right now, so the Senators are going to have to scrap and get back into this one. Yeah, Senators get Meredith Deaton and Jayla Bat with two fouls apiece. You know, uh, um, you know, Borden setting pretty decent on foul trouble. A Ava Wheeler, number yeah, three, only two. one with two. And, you know, they're all, all three girls are still in the game. This is where that trap comes. If you try to attack the center of this, they've got three girls sitting there waiting on you. We're going to get A.J. Mallard on her second foul. Yep, her second. That one gets inbounded into the backcourt to Shelby Griffiths. Jayla Bat down the lane. That one up and good. Doesn't get any backboard on it, but it still goes in for her. Gives her six. That ends the scoring drought for the Senators. Yeah, and see, whenever Hart steps out there, that's a moving screen. She cannot step out and then screen the girl. Hart goes down the lane, knocks that one in. Makes it 29-14. Griffiths off to Bat. Bat down the lane. Going to be called oh, for no. travel. No. Caught it in a weird spot. Just, threw it up. Kind of got fouled at the same yeah. time. All Everything kind of went wrong all at once yeah. for Jayla on that one. Not sure how that worked out. Rarick with the ball. She's going to come up, be picked up by Jayla Bat. Rarick off to Wheeler. Wheeler for three. Bang. She knocks that one in. Deaton gets it over to Griffiths, off to Schmidt. Schmidt tries to get down the lane. She That'll be a travel. That's turnover number 12 of the first half and That's for what the we, Senators. We talked about, you know, our guards running in there. When you run in, you have to have a plan. Yep. So we're going to take a full timeout here, hear a commercial from Hearst Auction Service once again. We'll be back. Hearst Auction LLC believes that the auction method is the best way to sell real estate or personal property in settling estates, divorces, bankruptcies, partnerships, and relocations. By bringing together a large number of interested buyers at one time, this in turn creates competitive bidding, 
which will get the highest dollar for your real estate or personal property. Hearst Auction Service LLC believes that a successful auction doesn't just happen by accident. It depends on proven experience, dedication, reputation, and successful marketing. It's coordinated event in which every aspect of auction must be carefully planned and executed. From the initial inspection of the property by the auctioneer himself, determining what our customers' goals are, the advertising plan, pre-auction preparation, auction day, end of auction. You can trust Hearst Auction Service LLC to being dedicated and committed to their customers from the beginning to the end of their auction. Hearst Auction Service LLC is located on Daisy Hill Road in Borden. Call Sam or Brad Hearst at 812-967-2845. Back to live action here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium where the Senators do trail 32-14 to the Borden Braves. Borden moving the ball around. Comes into Hart, off to Mallard. Mallard for three. Bang, she knocks that one in. Mallard with nine. I believe she's hit three three-pointers. Senators trail 36-14. Another turnover Field. for the Senators, and then a kick ahead to Mallard. Mallard leaves it off to Wheeler. Wheeler turns and then turns it back over. Thompson gets her hand on that one. That was a good job by Lily being there, knowing that ball was coming. Thompson for three. I like it. It's short. No good. Rebound by Rarick and back the other way. It's Borden's 12th rebound of this half. A kick in the corner to uh, Loy. Off the heart to Wheeler in the corner. Wheeler for three. That one no good. Meredith Deaton with the rebound. Deaton looking to go down the lane. Floater for her. That one left short. Hart off to Rarick. Rarick down the lane on that side. Puts that one up. It's no good. Deaton with the rebound. And off come the Senators. Yeah, that's going to be on number yep, 11. Mallard. Mallard, that's her third. Picks up her third personal. And this is where we want to be, Craig. We want to be in the – we want to get those girls in foul trouble. As we said, that bench is not very deep. Meredith going inbound it to Shelby. 20 seconds to go here in the first half. Good there's take. A, there's a good take underneath by Ava Woods. She's got seven of the 16. Rarick down the lane, floater up, no good. Deaton grabs it and chucks it full court, but it's after the halftime buzzer. So we're going to get our totals here, and then we'll be back. Um, no, we won't. We're going get to our, get our halftime stats and then have our commissioner's corner. So halftime stats look something along the lines of being the Senators being led in scoring by Ava Woods with seven. Jayla Bat has six, and Meredith Deaton has three to get them 16. Uh, the Borden Braves are led by Riley Rarick with 11, Ava Wheeler with 10, and A.J. Mallard with nine. Reagan Loy has a three-pointer along with Emma Hart has three to give them their 35. The Senators are 0 of four from um, the free throw line. And the um, Borden Braves are four of eight. Senders five of 12 from two point range, two of five from three point range. So seven of 17 total for 41%. The Borden Braves are 10 of 19 from two point range and four of 11 from three point range. Overall, 14 of 30 for 46%. Senators have 12 rebounds where the Borden Braves have 13. Senators have 13 turnovers, and Borden has four. So with that, we're going to step aside, have the commissioner's corner, and we'll be back with more uh, sectional 61 action here at West Washington in just a moment. 
It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Neidig. Welcome back, everyone, to our weekly conversation with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. And Paul, thank you so much for taking time to be with us. We are in tournament time we're in tournament mode girl sectionals this week uh we had uh, uh, wrestling last saturday girl swimming coming up this weekend it is a tremendous time of year for our student athletes around the state you know we we've walked this walk a few times but you know every year this this new tournament season brings a, a new level of excitement you know it's you, you know you have your regular season and that's been done and the girls certainly just finished up their regular season and and uh, now they get to see if all the practice has paid off, and, and they're going to march through this tournament and, and hopefully achieve some of their goals. And we also know teams will not. But at the end of the day, participation in an education-based athletic system is much more than tournament success, and that's one thing we'll always be proud of. But, uh, you know, the other thing, Coach, with uh, girls' basketball, uh, we have a phenomenal partner in the Fever. And actually, some of the Fever players are out around the state attending girls sectionals tonight we so appreciate their sports and, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Their, their support and being able to uh, also promote what the fever does and i think they're going to have a special year this year i agree 100 percent. you and i have the luxury of time behind as we've lived these experiences as as student athletes as being members of the athletic community and uh, always tell parents and always tell kids enjoy this because this is a lifelong memory for you and, and do it and do it the right way it matters it matters for all kids and we're so proud of being able to keep an education-based athletic system that's focused on the classroom first and also focused on the last kid who makes a team that's we have to make sure what we do is good for that kid not all kids i mean and and, and in turn that makes right. it good for all kids Paul Knightig joining us. We're talking about the IHSAA. All right, Paul, reclassification is a topic that's out there coming up very soon. You're going to be releasing uh, the Department of Education enrollment figures around the state to begin this process. And just as a reminder for everyone, reclassification is every two years, correct? That's right, Coach, every two years. And as I often have said, uh, you know, there will be a lot of – this is one of the things that we do that often – um, brings a lot of debate to the table, you know, but that's okay because it matters to people, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. The, the the thing that I often say is that everybody out there that cares about what we do can draw a perfect tournament for their school, and certainly we'll hear about that also along the way. And, and I understand that too. But yeah, we're ready to get ready to begin. The, the actual numbers will be released in the coming days. Once those numbers are out, then we'll start putting. Uh, we've already begun putting committees together. And one big change this year, Coach, is that uh, mm-hmm. we used to divide classes even because of the disparity between the size of the schools that we have in the state. Uh, the largest 20, 20% of the schools in the state will be in 4A, and we'll have 25% in 3A, 25% of the schools in 2A, and 30% in 1A. And that's simply because now all of our 1A schools participate in all sports. Uh, right is why we put a few more schools in single class and the the other change this year is we have a, a, a we're going to be aligning sectionals across all four class sports to where your basketball girls and boys your volleyball baseball mm-hmm. softball sectionals will have uh, the same opponents maybe a slight adjustment with success factor but you're going to be those schools are going to be playing each other in all four class tournaments and then we have another committee that does a three class tournament and then, obviously, the six-class football tournament is our third committee right. that starts putting these sectionals together. The commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Knighting, with us talking about all things IHSAA-related. Commissioner, be safe, you and your staff, when you're traveling, watching games. Thanks so much for your time, and thanks for all that you and your staff do to make sports, high school sports in our state matter at the level that it does. Thanks so much. Thanks, Coach, and I appreciate everything you do uh, in this great state. Thanks for listening to The Commissioner's Corner with IHSAA Commissioner Paul Neidig and Coach Bob Lovell. And thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community.
At Richardson's Heating and Air, our promise is always to put our customers first and give you the quality and comfort of heating and air conditioning that you deserve. We specialize in Rheem products that bring comfort and quality together. We've had the privilege of servicing Washington County and the surrounding area since 1996. At Richardson's Heating and Air, you're more than just a customer. You are family. You can visit our web pa- website or our Facebook page to learn more about us. We can also be reached at 812-883-2025. Richardson Heating and Air. We're back to action here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium. We're only about two minutes away from the start of the second half of play here. Senators have to get something going. They trail 35-16 to the Borden Braves. Um, You know, just not a great half of basketball for the Senators. Only three girls in the scoring column. Borden with five in the scoring column and already two in double digits with Rarick with her 11 and Ava Wheeler with her 10. Um, you know, personal fouls really hurting the Senators where uh, Jayla Bat has two along with Meredith Deaton. She has two. Mallard actually has three for the Braves, and Wheeler has two. So a little bit of foul trouble on both sides. The Senators are a little deeper than the Borden Braves, but can the Senators do something to make the Braves um, change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball and get, you know, something really kind of going for the Senators? Yeah, you know, we, we I, th- I think they can. I really do. I just I would like to see some more confidence out there and get them girls fired up a little bit more. You know, I, I don't understand why they're why they're not so confident. They got they got to be confident. You know, and, and uh, you know I, I can see Borden. They're kind of they're kind of laid back just a little bit now. And I tell you what, the third quarter we're going to see what happens. And I, you know what, the Senators come out if they come out and play aggressive, stop some of this, and eat it, eat away at that lead. I really think they can come back. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, the Senators do trail. 35 to 16. Uh, looks like Borden's going to go back with their original starting lineup. I think we are too. Yeah. Yep. Look, looks like we're going with ours also. So. Craig, okay, we talked about our game sponsor there, Hearst Auctioneer Service. Uh, if you have any personal property or personal items you want to sell and and uh, have a little Saturday auction, oh Sam Hurst and his son, they do a great job. Good hometown, honest people. So. Yeah, uh, you know, like I say, you want to thank them for sponsoring tonight, along with all of our other sponsors here at sectional, sectional play. Yeah, we were able to pick up five sponsors, one for each game. There's a turnover for Borden. Jayla goes up, and Rarick going to pick that one up. That's going to be her second. Quick two on her. She thought she got all ball. Jayla back going to go to the line for her first free throws of the night. Yeah, that's, that's the thing on both teams. You know, the, a lot of the girls are hitting the ball, you know, but whenever they come down, they hit the body as well. Leaves that one short. Jayla bends the knees, lets that one fly. That one way short. Wheeler yep. with the rebound. Back quickly comes Borden off to Mallard. Now leaves it off to Rarick. Back to Rarick around. That's Reagan Loy. 
Gordon running through their offense. Senators doing a nice job of not letting anything get down the lane. Yeah, Going to be travel. a yep, double, double dribble, dribble there. Double dribble. Yep. So that's turnover number, uh, number two. two for them in this half. They only had four in the first half, so still only six total. That's a pretty clean game. Ball comes across half court. You know, Craig, we was just talking about right here. You know, maybe Senators gonna have to start doing a little bit more outside shooting to bring to bring the Borden Braves outside. Yeah, Jayla goes yep. up and gets fouled on that one. Twenty-two. That's gonna be Emma Hart, her second. Jayla back back to the free throw line again. That one much better. Makes it 35-17. 7.04 to go here in the third. A little Same. hard on that one. Ava Wheeler with the rebound. She's looking to go coast to coast. Yeah. Gets it across half court and pulls up, leaves it off to Rarick. Senator's playing a tighter defense here. Rarick hands it off to Mallard. Shelby Griffith stays in front of her, goes off to Reagan Loy. Back to Emma Hart in the post to Wheeler. Wheeler with the spin. Unable to knock that, oh, that one down. Yeah, there we go. There we go. He was over Jayla's back all the day. That's going to be on Rarick. That's be her third. Yep, that's Rarick's third. She's not happy with the call at all. And that's what we talked about. We have to be get these girls in foul trouble. Yep. So she's got three. Mallet's got three. Hart's got two. Wheeler's got two. So Borden going to play with a little bit of foul trouble here. Goes to Schmidt. Schmidt tries to fake it. That one goes up. It's no good. Yeah, probably nothing there on that shot. Gets out ahead to Mallet. Mallet for a pull-up jumper from five. That's good. The Senators keep pushing that ball down. Mallet with nine. Goes in the corner to Bat. Bat puts that one up. It's no good. Wheeler with the rebound. Somebody's got to stop the ball. Goes through Rarick's hands. And she hands it off to Wheeler. Wheeler trying to get open. Screen set there by Hart. Jayla Bat gambles. Rarick down the lane. Up and good for her bucket. Gives her 13. 39-17. You know, Jayla almost had that pass, but, you know, like I say, we need to play strong defense, just stay right up on these girls. Deep Mayor's for deep. a deep three. That one no good. Hart with the rebound coming out of there. Wheeler down the lane, up and good. Yeah, and we need to get Ava to drop back. We need Ava to drop back in that center of that, that, uh, the goal and, and kind of just set home. Yeah, 41-17, that's a 24-point lead. That goes through Wheeler's hands. Deaton looking to go baseline, nothing there. Kicks it off to Schmidt. Schmidt, nothing there. Off to Deaton in the corner for three. That one left short. Mallard with the rebound. Yeah, it's going to be Ava Wheeler all the way, and she missed it. Deaton hustling back. Goes down the lane. Got to be something there. Deaton goes he up and it. makes that one. So that's going to be a three-point opportunity for Deaton. That gives her five points. You know, he never made a motion all yeah. the way. <laughs> I believe they're going to give that to Emma Hart. Yeah. That's her third. Deaton off on that shot. Braves quickly have seven rebounds in this quarter alone. Rarick leaves it off to Hart down yep. the lane. She gets her third bucket. And that's of that's the where night. the Senators been getting beat all night. We have to drop into a two-three zone. I'm, I'm, you know, it's just one of those things that we're going to have to drop down. They're playing us up high, do the top screens, and then we're just setting ducks. Deaton for three misses that one. Borden rebounds and quickly back behind the back. Mallard gets in the lane, leaves a little floater up, but Hart there to rebound it. No good. Senators give Chase the other way. Bat up and good. 
She's got nine. Cuts the lead to 22. Rarick gonna get hip checked there by Ava Woods, just not the foot speed yep. from Woods. It's gonna be her second personal. And see, that's this is one of those things, Craig, that we've talked about all season. Ava does not need to be at three-point line guarding somebody. Yeah, you she know, needs we, to drop straight we, back we down the line. To, we have to be getting something switched there. Ball gonna come in from Rarick into Hart, around to Mallard. Out to Wheeler, Wheeler for three. That one no good, Deaton with the rebound. Deaton's gonna go coast. Pulls up from about seven feet, leaves that one short. short. Jayla's gotta get back. I wanna head to Mallard, Mallard up and good. That's their third player in double digits. They're gonna take a full timeout. We're gonna take a full timeout here from Lynx Clothing and Shoes and be back in just a moment. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping alternations and layaway. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday 9 to 6, and Saturday 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and are a family owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today, 812-883-4154. Back to action here at West Washington where the Senators do trail 45-21. Borden, number three team in 1A, kind of has come in and, and shown the Senators what it's like to play the number yeah. three team in 1A. They sure have. Borden's got such a slick offense. Yeah, they just keep the ball moving the whole time. And a 1-3-1 one, one here on defense with those three bigs in the middle. Well, and they're long. I mean, it's it's a lot like the team that we played in Orleans. There's a, a three-point miss. Jayla gets the rebound and able to get it up and in. Jayla's now in double digits, the first senator in double digits with 11. Wheeler down the lane. Up and good for her. That was a good collection she had there. You know, Ava, Ava's an athlete, and, you know, she came down, she collected herself and got that shot. Ball left off to Griffiths, off to Bat in the corner where she's trapped. Lily Thompson across the lane, a little floater for her. It's no good, rebounded by Rarick. Rarick pulls up from the elbow. That Short. one no good. We gotta get Nobody a gets a rebound. Down the lane, Wheeler no good. It's gonna stay on board in possession. Yeah, Lily Thompson gets her hand on it but isn't able to control it. So it's gonna go to the Braves. Meredith Deaton has to tie her shoe underneath the bucket. The ball comes into Hart. Underneath to Wheeler. Wheeler back to Rarick. Rarick for three. Bang! Knocks that one in. She's now got 16. Borden out ahead here, 50 to 23. Center's in the corner to bat, bat down the lane. Yeah, and that's going to be on 21. Uh, that's, Fisk. Yep. Peyton Fisk. That'll be her first foul, right? Yep. Yep. They're going to end up shooting free throws on this one because of the five fouls. 201 left to go here in the third. Lady Braves up 27 here. Jayla Back going to go to the line. I think they let a player in, and they're going to fix that. Yep. I want to give a big shout-out to all of our sponsors. Rick Roberts for District 3 Commissioner of Washington County. Um, Hearst Auction Service, Jacoby Sales, uh, Richardson's Heating and Air, and John Jones, who is our sponsor for tomorrow's championship game. Yeah, a great shout-out to those sponsors. Still trying to figure out who needed to come in, but Jayla Back going to go to the line. Yeah, she did, they didn't. Uh, the rest kind of let them substitute before the shot. That one no good, so that's a miss from Jayla. 
Rare going to come over and check on what Coach Vic wants to run. Jayla with a second free throw attempt coming. That one much better, goes right through. Senators in the full court press here. We got to get back. There's no one guarding back. We got Adele Brown checks into the game for Ava Woods. That's Adele's first action tonight. Wheeler down the lane, cuts through everybody, going to pick up a foul. I don't know if they got that one on Deaton. Nope, going to give it to Lily, Lily Thompson. Thompson. It's Lily's first foul. Yep. Lily's been on the floor a lot tonight and not picked up a foul. It's played good defense. Kind of unlike her. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Wheeler's first one up and good. She's got 15. Makes it 51-24. Wheeler, a couple of dribbles. That one's yeah. long. You see, I would have called that over the back. <laughs> Dale for long three. Hot roll, three-pointer. She's only the fourth senator to score tonight, so a kick it ahead. Oh, that's oh, a double that's dribble. that's a double dribble. <laughs> Number five yeah. checked into the game. Um, Looking to get that ball on the ground. Does a nice job of stopping, but then puts the ball on the ground again. Right, so. we're going to get Elena Schmidt in for Billy Thompson maybe to finish this quarter. Ball Something you don't see on the Senator court. We get three three of the uh, substitutes in. And Meredith for three. Meredith steps up, knocks down a three. She's got eight. Lead down to 21. Wheeler thought about going coast to coast. Nothing going there for her. Kicks it in the corner to Rarick. Rarick up, gets the ball yep. on the backboard. That one's good. Yeah, Jayla wasn't paying attention. Look, look, caught, turned her head. Lead back up to 23. Deaton down the lane. Going to get a foul. Two shots for her. Is that going to be on number five? I don't know who they're giving that one to. Yep. Yep. Her first personal. 42.5 seconds to go here. Meredith Deaton misses that one. What's our free throw percentage, Craig? Uh, right now we're 25%. Yeah. We're two of eight. That's what I thought. <laughs> Not very good. Second one. That one also a miss, but hot roll with the rebound. Yeah, Kicks it go. out to Deaton. Deaton for three. Looks like it's going to be off a little. Misses that one. Hot roll again. Yeah, we're going to get a push on number five again. Yep. Going to be her second. Deaton goes back to the line where we're two of nine. Trickles over the front. Yeah. You would think we wasn't on our home court shooting free throws. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Nation over in the corner, a little quiet at the moment. He misses that one, Hart with the rebound. Kicks it back to Rarick, ahead to Wheeler. Wheeler picked up by Deaton, gets by her down the lane. Yeah, and I, I don't know about that call. I really don't. Yep. That hand was on the ball the whole time. Wheeler gets down the lane. We're going to count that one and get Meredith her third mm -hmm. personal. You know, something we see here on this game that we didn't see in the first time we played Borden is Wheeler driving to the basket. Up and good. Wheeler knocks that one in. Gives her 18 to tie Rarick for the lead in the game. Number one, Reagan Loy checks in. Emma Hart checks out. Wheeler also out. 40 comes in. Shelby Thornsbury. J. 
Jayla Bat working around, goes up, going to get hacked there by 21. Uh, Peyton Fisk. Going to be her second. 56-31, Senators trail here. Jayla Bat to the line. <laughs> we cannot buy a free throw tonight. Nope, three of 12. That one also no good. I didn't see it, but Wheeler checked back in. I think Wheeler's wanting to shoot that three. That one no good. So three-point miss for them. That's going to end the third quarter, 56-31. We're going to step aside, take a quick commercial break, and be back for the fourth quarter action here in just a moment. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our county. The initial focus has centered on adults with some college and no degree. With the assistance of scholarships and a peer mentoring program, the foundation began helping adults return to college to complete their degree or obtain a certification in 2013. Realizing that strength lies in numbers, Washington County partnered with Clark, Floyd, Harrison, and Scott counties to create Education Matters Southern Indiana. This initiative continues to build. Back to live action here in T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium on the Ron Smith Court where the Senators do trail. 56-31 to the Borden Braves. Got a little Sweet Caroline playing. Yeah. Brian, give a plug to our game sponsor, Hearst hey, Auction Service. Hearst Auction Service, guys. You know, good hometown people. Uh, they did a couple auctions I've been to here recently, and just good, solid people. I tell you, uh, uh, Sam Hearst, the, the older gentleman that owns the company, I, t I tell you, he's about as friendly a guy as you'll ever meet. Uh, puts on the first-class auctioneer, auction service, the first-class auctioneer. Uh, right out of Borden, Indiana, uh, uh, right where the Braves are from. And, and, you know, he's a sponsor of the Braves basketball, football, or Braves basketball, softball. Uh, they don't have football. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Sam and Sam and his boy down there doing a great job. Uh, like I say, a first-class service. You need anything done down there, let's get a hold of those guys. Uh, let's give another shout-out. I know somebody who's having a, a uh, pig auction slash sheep auction yeah. March 15th. March the 15th. We're going to try to bring some sheep in there on that sale. Uh, first time we've ever kind of did that, but uh, we uh, kind of going to cut back a little bit on the pig side of things here the next couple of years and maybe half pace it. So <laughs> we're looking for something to kind of fill that, you know, forever Friday night we have in, in March and uh, uh, give Corey something to do because he likes to complain about not having to do too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's always the uh, highlight of spring break. It starts off spring break. Usually we always try to come down and, get that one. Yeah. Adele Brown knocks in a three for the Senators. Yeah, the hot roll. She ain't got no butter on her fingers tonight. There's a turnover for the Braves. Macy Lowry up and good. Borden quickly ahead to Mallard. Mallard leaves it off to Rarick. Rarick off to Wheeler. Leave it off to Hart. Nice bucket there by Hart. That's going to be four on Meredith. They've run that play three <laughs> times, and it's worked every single yes. time. They yes. seal with Hart, and then she rolls down the lane, and yep. they just lead her um, kind of like a, a pass in football. They don't even look. Right, they just throw right. it, and she goes and gets it. Yep, if you're going to play man-to-man -man and you ain't paying attention on the help side, that's going to work every time. Hart knocks that one in, gives her nine. Shelby Griffiths thought about a three for a second. That one going to be taken away from the Senators. Yeah, Mayor's got to be smart here. We don't need you to foul out on that. Mallet up, no good. Woods with the rebound as she hits the deck. 
Ball comes around to Deaton in the corner to Adele. Adele thinks about stepping yeah, into one. She should have shot that one. Comes back to Deaton. Deaton for three. Knocks that one in. She's now in double digits with 12. Out ahead to Wheeler. Wheeler leaves it off to Hart. Hart, a couple of dribbles, tries to get past Woods. That was That's Reagan point. Loy knocks in her second three-point bucket. Adele Brown for three, that one no good. Lowry with the rebound. Rarick gonna pick that one up. And that'll be four on Rarick. Oh, he called it on, called it on 22. Is that right? I don't know. I don't know who they called it on. They've got 10 on the board, that's not right. They gave it to number two, Riley Rarick. There we go. Yeah, now that's it's what I was thinking, yeah. We're going to stay with you here through this timeout. The uh, Senators trail 62-41. If everything holds how it is now, we're going to see number one, Lanesville, versus number three, Borden, in the championship game tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. I know if you were here in the building and were um, hearing the, yeah. the public address announcer, Claude Combs, he missed said 7.30. Um, and then corrected himself. It is 7 o'clock tomorrow yes, for sir. that tip. I believe doors open at 6. And I'm going to tell so, you what, Craig, if you ain't here at 6.30, you're late. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> if you're not here at 6.30, you're not getting a seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lanesville come in tonight and took half the gymnasium up. Great yeah. turnout by the Lanesville Eagles tonight. I would say there would just be only more to come tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. If um, you can't make it, game will be live here on WWSR and West Washington live stream. Macy Lowry steps up, knocks that one in. Makes it 43-62. That's a turnover for Borden after they miss the two and get the rebound. Ahead to Lowry, Lowry unable to get it up on the board. Griffiths down the lane, a little floater for her. Shelby gets her first two points of the new one. 5.20 to go here. 22, Adele Brown going to pick up her first foul. Emma Hart going to inbound the ball. She goes deep ahead to Lloyd. Lloyd to Mallet. Mallet up and good. Well, you don't have to dribble the ball to get it up the floor if you can pass it that well. Yeah, that's right. Great passing. Deaton for three, misses that one. Wheeler with the rebound, then dribbles it off her own foot into the board and cheering section. Nice hands there by the cheerleader to catch that one. Yeah, that could have been bad. <laughs> Senator Nation letting them know what they think. Yeah. We may be down on the board, but the cheer, cheering section is still alive over there in wideout night. Adele Brown for three again. That one no good. Rarick with that foul. And Deaton going to pick up Mary's her fifth foul. fifth foul. She's gone with four minutes to go in the game. So Deaton fouls out. Jay Labatt going to check in for the final 441 here. Nice season for Meredith. Over 260 points scored. Meredith's a good girl. A lot of accomplishments this year for Meredith. Yeah. Oh, I believe that would. I'm not sure who they're going to give that I, one to because Shelby got her in the back and then Abel Woods is just standing there. Oh. Yep, they're going to give it to Shelby. Her first. I would like to see Ava just hit the floor because uh, <laughs> I believe that would have been number five. Yeah, right? I don't know that there's many girls that are going to run into Ava that are going to knock her down. Yeah. Need some of that flop action. Yeah. Mallard thinks about the three, pulls it back down. Swings it out to Wheeler. Going to be three seconds on Rarick. 
she was if it was three, it was really probably about 15. I, mean, I was going to say. She didn't get she out of the lane for a while. under a long time. <laughs> I think she kind of forgot where she was, yeah, too. So, yeah. Not many three-second calls we saw this year, though. Yeah, that's only about the third one, I think. So, Probably something that could be called a whole lot more in the girls' game. Right. Griffiths with that one up. No good. Lowry with the rebound. Lowry for three. That one no good. Yep. Ava Woods tries to get her hand on it, but unable to control it. Comes into Adele Brown. Thinks about the three, drives down the lane, loses the ball, then gets it up on the backboard. Rear comes, oh no, Hart comes out with it, goes coast to coast, gets run. Sorry, Macy Lowry gets run over. Senators ahead the other way. Oh. Adele Good Brown enough. tries to put it up, gets that one blocked by Rarick. Then Macy Lowry gets her pocket picked. I believe the referees say, let's just play this game out. Yep. 3.24 to go here in the fourth, 64-45, Senators trail. Quickly into Emma Hart. Hart gets it across half court, leaves it off to Reagan Loy. Back to Rarick. Rarick picked up by Lowry. Wheeler down the lane. Gives it off to Hart again. Mallard now down the lane. Jayla Bat steps in. Nothing going there for her. Wheeler with the That's rebound. A, yeah, jump ball. Jump ball. Nice call there for the official. That's the correct call. It was blocked, but she was still in possession of it. So not a travel. Going to be a jump ball given to the Senators on the alternating possession. Three minutes to go here. That one down the lane, Jayla Bat. No good, Wheeler with the rebound. Rarick across half court. Yeah, I would say the benches are probably going yep, to start clearing we're going to out start here. Seeing them. They feed it underneath to Rarick. Rarick puts it up and then falls down. Yeah, well, Jayla needs to just take this all the way to the basket. She leaves it off to Adele. Adele off to Lowry. Back to Adele. Adele for three. No good. Shelby Griffiths there. It's going to be blocked. It's going to be the four on Emma Hart. Her That's fifth. her fifth. So now she's gone. Must have missed one. Yep. In comes number 40, Shelby Thornbury. Nice game there for Emma Hart. She checks out with nine points. Shelby Griffiths misses that first one. Senators are seven of 18. Yeah. We see a whole host of Senators check in. We're going to see Lainey Cameron, um, Elena Schmidt, Evo Tool. Uh, to see Layla Shelby Manship. Griffiths hit this last free throw. Nope. That one kicked ahead to Rarick. Rarick puts that one up. It's up and good. The ref's going to let him substitute yep. in. That'll substitute be timeout. Shelby Griffiths come off, comes off the court. Sentimental moment for a little smells Griffiths. Yep. It'll be her last game of the season here and her last game of her time here at West Washington. <laughs> Borden Faithful <laughs> asking for Lucia. I believe that's their foreign exchange student. I'm not positive on that. Yeah. But. That's a miss there for Elena Schmidt, rebounded by Borden. Mallard still on the court. She's picked up by uh, Schmidt. That's a carry. I'm not sure who they're going to give that one to. Going to give it to Elena Schmidt. 
Craig, okay, I tell you, tomorrow night, if you ain't got tickets to get in the door, you better call ahead or send somebody over here to get them as soon as you can because it's going to be a, a thriller. And I tell you, it's, it's going to be one of those games that, uh, you know, you've you got to get here early. You better get your seat. You better be ready to make some noise because this gymnasium is going to be pretty loud. Yeah, it's going to be standing room only here, I'm sure. So. Two great teams going to battle it out tomorrow night. Yeah, Lanesville. Number um, one ranked team. And that's a rematch of an earlier game that was yeah. a two-point game. Two-pointer. And then we're back here again next week. We'll be hosting a regional. Yeah, regional will be hosted here. We're waiting until Sunday at about 10 in the morning. We'll find out what yeah. four teams will be playing here. Right, and if there's anyone out there that's wanting to be a sponsor for the regional games, uh, you know, like I say, if you're listening or going to follow up on th these games to look ahead, uh, you don't have to be from West Washington. You can be from anywhere. Yep. Uh, we'll take some sponsorships and we'll be li uh, broadcast you here on live stream. Number 24, Lucia Munoz checks in, the 5'4 sophomore. Better throw it across the half court, line, girls. It's going to be a turnover for the Braves. Leaves it off to Elena Schmidt. She Braves. gets that one up and in. Good points for Elena. Emma Schmidt going to get that one to Lily Thompson and two more. Thompson with her first bucket of the night, 49-67. It'll be white ball. Forty-four seconds to go here in this one. That one inbounded to Elena Schmidt. That one up, no good. Manship with the rebound. She gets a bucket. Comes across half court. 30.4 seconds left to go here. 67-51. Borden leads this one. Borden fans over calling for the number 24 to get the shot. That's a bucket for Thornsbury. 20 seconds to go here. Leaves it off to Thompson, off her foot. And gets it off to Schmidt. Schmidt feeds it to her sister for three. That one no good. Can go back to Borden's possession with 5.9 seconds yep. here. Well, Craig, it's pretty safe to say we're, uh, we're going to be back here tomorrow night. Check us out. Number one, Lanesville versus number three, Borden. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a packed house, a great game. Yes. Um, you know, lots of people wanting to see that one. So if you can't get in the gym, if you're not going to be here, um, you know, you can watch us on West Washington live stream. Or you can listen to us on WWSR. We will be on both of those tomorrow. Uh, probably go live around 6.30 um, with pregame. Shelby Thornberry going to step up to the line. She's already got two points tonight. Misses that one. Greg, do we get anybody coming on after the game? Uh, I don't know if, if Coach is going to come over or not. I'm sure she's pretty emotional, going to talk right. with her girls. I don't know if she's going to come over or not. Misses that second one. And we're going to call it the game. Yep, that's going to be the end of the game. The Borden Braves are going to win 69-51 over the Senators of West Washington. The Senators are led in scoring by two um, with 12. Jayla Batt had 12. Meredith Deaton had 12. Senior Shelby Griffith chipped in two. Elena Schmidt had two. Adele Brown with six. Layla Manship with two, Ava Woods with nine, Macy Lowry with four, and Lily Thompson with two to get their 51. <clears throat> uh, Borden led in scoring by Riley Rarick with her 20. Ava Wheeler chips in 18. A.J. Mallard with 14. Emma Hart with nine. Reagan Loy with six. And Shelby Thornberry with two. Overall game shooting. Oh, let me get to it. There it is. 
Uh, the Senators were 7 of 23 from the free throw line for 30%. They were 13 of 31 from two-point range for 42%, and 6 of 20 from three-point range for 30%. So overall, they were 19 of 51 for 37%. The Braves were 9 of 17 for 52%. From the free throw line, they were 21 of 39 from two-point range for 53%. From two-point range, from three-point range, they were 6 of 16 for 37%. So overall, 27 of 55 for 49%. Rebounding, the Senators had 27. The Braves had um, 34. Turnovers, 15 for the Senators, 13 for the Braves. So pretty much the Braves led in every column of um, the stat sheet, which is why they were able to pull out the victory 51 to 69. Ryan, thoughts? You know, I tell you what, Craig, we came out here tonight and we, pl we played, uh, I think we played pretty good. I, I really do. I think we we, we kind of got a little bit nervous coming out. I don't think I don't think we was quite as quite as ready as we, we thought we was. But uh, you know what? I tell you what. It, you know the season's over, and you know just like that, we, it seems like yesterday we were sitting here talking about how we was going to come in to, and get ready for sectional championship. But uh, you know I tell you what. The girls have grown a lot. They've improved a lot. The girls got in a rhythm there at the end of the season, and that's what we was out for. You know we beat we did we beat a lot of teams. Uh, uh, you know and we and we was right there on every game. I don't think there was any game that we ever really got blown away. Way. So right. you know what? Hats off to the girls. I want to say good luck to Ava O'Toole or Eva O'Toole and Shelby Griffiths as they leave the Ron Smith court tonight for their last time. Uh, two good girls that are that are, uh, are just good, solid people. And, and uh, you know, we look back to coming in here next year. Uh, we're going to have Lily Thompson as a senior, uh, Ava Woods be coming in here as a senior, and Emma Schmidt as seniors, and they'll be led, they'll be followed up by your your freshman or your freshman gar girls that's coming in off the eighth grade team and also your freshman girls that are actually right now that's coming in, and then you'll be coming in with uh, that, that uh, sophomore class coming in next year. Just a good, solid set of girls. Like I say, we lose two, but we gain six. And, you know, like I say, that, that's pretty important to a basketball program is when you can you can lose just a couple and then gain six more. I, t I do feel like the Senators were, were uh, uh, very – uh, disciplined in their in their actions this year. I think they they held their head high on their defeats and they, d they held their head high on their wins. So you know, like I say, good solid girls. They, well, I wouldn't trade any of them for anybody. Uh, just just a good solid team, good solid effort. We came out on the short end of the stick here when we had sectionals at home. But I tell you what, you know, the girls played hard. They played good. Uh, hats off to athletic director Darren Russell for getting this putting this thing on and uh, uh, a great atmosphere out here tonight. Uh, the guys over, guys, girls, cheerleaders over in the pep session, uh, you, you know, or the cheering section, uh, you know, they did a great job. And, uh, you know, looking so we're not going to be signing on for the girls anymore this season. But, you know, we do have the boys coming up here uh, with some with some other events, and the boys section will be coming up here shortly. So, you know, that's something we got to look forward to. Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, great season overall for the Senators. Um, they finished the year 13-10. and 10. So winning season for them. I know they wanted to go a couple of steps further than what they did. Um, but, you know, congratulations to all of those players and the coaching staff. Looking forward to calling games again next year. Ryan, final thoughts for this year? Hey, Craig, I appreciate you doing what you do. I mean, like like Bubba says, you're the professor. You're the brains behind the operation. <laughs> and if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be doing none of this stuff. And I tell you, it's uh, it's it's a blessing to have you as my friend and, and colleague because, like I say, I, I might be out at an auction somewhere or doing something and, and not be able to get to one of my kids' sports games and – and, uh, you know, you seem to always get it broke through or tell me how to get on. So, uh, like I say, hats off to you. And, and uh, you know, here in the last little bit, we pushed a little effort and got a, got a ca uh, camera on the court and stuff like that. So I appreciate what you do. Appreciate, you know, Bubba coming in and doing the guys. You know, I told him at the beginning of the season, I said, Bubba, I tell you what, it's the hardest thing I think I've ever done to sit on that, <laughs> sit on that, sit on there, hold that microphone in my face and, and not yell at the rest or nothing. I said, especially when you got a kid out there playing. So, like I say, hats off to you, Craig. I really appreciate you. You're one of my good friends and, and uh, appreciate what you do for our school you're probably underpaid we'll give it we'll give a shout out to mr nance hope he's still listening here we're gonna need some more money for this here uh, live stream stuff but uh like i say if you want to be a sponsor hey this is all you know we do this for the people that can't get to a game you know it's not about you know the nba or the super bowl or anything like that it's about you know grandma grandpa or somebody else being out here being able to see their you know one of their relatives play or or maybe it's just a, a good friend from hawaii that's out here looking to see see one of us play but uh you know it, it's it's great uh wouldn't want to trade it for the world. West Washington Senator Athletics, go, go Senators. Yeah, well, thank you very much for all of your time this season, Ryan. Also, you've spent quite a bit of time here with me. We've traveled 
been to different places to do games. So a uh, big shout-out to you, and thank you for, um, you know, stepping on not only calling games but also sponsoring West Washington live stream. Like we said, if you're wanting to sponsor, sponsor regional, that's always an option, so let us know about that. But this will be our final time signing off for the West Washington Lady Senators. Um, great season had by them, 13-10 and 10 to finish out the season. Looking forward to next year.